you got 10 hours left. You literally have 10 hours left for the free money that Prize Picks is giving to you right now. Steph Curry, 0.5 points. If he scores a basket tonight in the tip off game for the NBA, you're a winner on Prize Picks. I don't care if you don't follow basketball, it's just free money. Everybody talk money. That shit is universal. All right. So get on Prize Picks. When you put $10 down on it, guess what? You're going to use promo code BDGE when you get onto the app for the first time, and they are going to double whatever you put down. So you'll have 20 or 40 or 80 to play with to put onto Steph Curry, 0.5 points it's free nothing in this world is free but this is the players on the waiver wire this week are not free okay our waiver wire rankings are up on bdge.co we're going to go through probably the top 10 or 12 talk about a little fab suggestion action as well as whether whether or not i use the number one waiver wire on any of these players spoiler alert there's not a single player on this week's waiver wire that i am dropping everything for that i'm using the number one waiver wire on but that doesn't mean that there aren't players that can help solidify our roster because there certainly are. We're heading into bye weeks. Things are tough. If you play in a three wide receiver, two flex league, you know, it's getting chippy out there. You got to fight for your fucking right to the playoffs. All right. <laughs> Top player on my waiver wire list this week is Rondell Moore. People out there that were wrong on him, they weren't wrong. They were early, okay? He looks like he's in the midst of a little bit of a breakout. D-Hop comes back this week, but Hollywood Brown is probably out for the foreseeable future. Since coming back from his injury, he has operated as a full-time player. 86% of the snaps in week four, 91% of them in week five, and 99% of the snaps in week six. He is he is the guy there. And who knows if D-Hop's going to come back less than 100%. Who knows if D-Hop's going to be the D-Hop that we've become accustomed to know. Regardless, they're forcing the ball to Rondell Moore, and he's becoming a PPR player, right? Eight targets two weeks ago, 10 targets. Last week, seven catches, six catches. So he's there statistically, and he's a guy that probably can be in your flex lineups, especially if you're in a half PPR or full PPR league. Next up, we're actually moving over to the running back position, okay? And there are a couple guys in the top five here, and they're two super similar players. It's Latavius Murray and Kenyon Drake. Now, Latavius Murray was signed off the streets two weeks ago. He has done this for the last four weeks. He knows, like, when Halloween fucking time comes around, he puts his Latavius Murray costume on because some team's going to sign him. He's going to hit the fucking field, and he's going to produce for whatever reason. That happened last night, Monday Night Football, right? With Javante Williams out, we thought Melvin Gordon was going to be the guy. Turns out that shit was a lie. Melvin Gordon, not the guy. He wasn't hurt. They came out after the game and basically said he was benched. Latavius Murray came on the field and took over. Melvin Gordon played nine snaps. Latavius Murray, 27, and Mike Boone, 21. Latavius Murray carried the ball 15 times for 66 yards. He is going to be a thing in this offense, and this offensive backfield is very much up for grabs. They don't score fucking touchdowns, but they'll get some volume back there. So Latavius Murray is a guy that I would for sure be looking to pick up if you need to plug the RB hole that is basically every lineup in fantasy football this year. It's pretty ugly. Kenyon Drake, on the other hand, is a little bit enticing in Baltimore. There are a lot more moving parts here because J.K. Dobbins' knee tightened up. Have to keep a really close eye on what's happening there. They seem hesitant to really give him a full workload regardless of that, or maybe they're just, they don't want to operate that way regardless of who is the uh, the guy in the backfield there. Kenyon Drake obviously had a really big game, huge efficiency, had like 11 carries, over 100 yards, touchdown. We can't expect that every week, but if you're running behind Lamar Jackson and you are the guy, you know, if J.K. Dobbins misses time, uh, Gus Edwards is still returning soon. He's someone that I would stash, but I'm not going to get like overly excited about. We just saw J.K. Dobbins is five, six weeks into the season and not fully recovered. Gus Edwards hasn't even been practicing with the team yet. Now he is. It's like he is even further behind J.K. Dobbins. So to get excited about him, Makes way less fucking sense. So Latavius Murray and Kenyon Drake obviously need to be owned. The wide receiver position under that, though, a dude that I was yelling about in yesterday's live stream, Tyquan Thornton of the New England Patriots, is a dude that I really, really think is going to break out over the next six to eight weeks. He seems to be a very big piece of this offense. It seems to be the guy they were trying to get Jonah Smith. They were trying to get Nikhil Harry. They're trying to get this versatile, explosive playmaker in their offense, which they've been lacking for so long. And it seems like he might embody that. He's 6'2". He runs a 4'2", Okay, so he's got length, he's got speed, he's got explosiveness. He scored two touchdowns on Sunday on limited snaps. His snap count's only going to go up. Kendrick Bourne is hurt. He's a dude that you probably don't, and most people don't know about him. He was he's a rookie. He was drafted in the second round. Uh, he missed most of the beginning of the season with a collarbone injury, but he is a dude that I think should be a priority for you. You probably won't really need to spend more than like 5% on him to get him in your league, but he's a dude that I would 100% uh, target. Rondell Moore I have is the one. I'd put like 15% on him, but no one on this list would I use the number one waiver wire on. 
And while we are on second round rookie wide receivers, we can talk about the boy Wandell over there in New York, right? First game back from the long string of missed weeks of a, I don't even remember what injury he was dealing with, to be honest with you, but four targets, three catches, 37 yards and a touchdown. And they need playmakers in that passing game. They're relying on Daniel Bellinger. They're relying on hopefully one good game out of every five games for Darius Slayton. King Galladay hasn't done a fucking thing. Darius Tony. <laughs> So Wandell Robinson is a guy that you should absolutely be targeting. He's a playmaker. He's explosive. He's he's like a, a Walmart version of Rondell Moore. But this is a hesitant to say it's a better offense, but I, the numbers don't fucking lie right now, I guess. Uh, so Wandell Robinson should absolutely be prioritized, as should a little rookie tight end that we also saw play last night. Albert O, a healthy scratch for Denver last night. Greg Dolchich, second tight end off the board this year in the NFL draft. Athletic. A lot of people really liked him. His NFL debut last night, coming off missing the first five weeks of the season. Leviton wrapped up the numbers for you in a bow. 71% of the snaps, 22 from the slot, 16 in line, three out wide. 27 routes on 34 Russ Wilson dropbacks. That's almost 80%. He had three targets, two for 44, and he touched down. And again, Albert O was a healthy scratch. So Greg Dolch is like, we spin our wheels. I think this is a guy that you really, really try and go and get for one reason. We spin our wheels every single week with this same group of tight ends over and over again. It's Tyler Conklin. It's Hayden Hurst. It's Evan Ingram. Where you know, I use this this fucking word 70 times a year. You're playing whack-a-mole with the same dudes over and over again, knowing that you're never going to get consistency for them. So you're trying to catch the production of last week, knowing it's not going to come again for another three weeks. It's like a cycle. Greg Dolchich is the only one that actually has a clear path to being a consistent producer right now. The other guys, like, yes, they'll play, but we don't ever get pr uh, consistent production from them. We just try to get lucky, put them into our lineups, and then they get zero points, or they get two points for us. And then we sit them, and then they get 17 points for us. But Greg Dolchich comes in, first game, 70% of snaps, 80% of routes, and he's not in a committee there at tight end, because they literally, the only guy that would have forced a committee with him just got his ass benched for him. So Greg Dolchich, if you need a tight end, he's the one that I would go after this week because he actually has upside. When you're looking at a guy like Kate Odden, who I have below him, Tampa Bay, right? Because um, Cameron Brait has now suffered two concussions in a three-week period. He's going to be out for a hot minute. So Kate Otten, the rookie, takes over there. And we know, you know, Brady will throw to his tight ends. I'm a little bit less inclined to go target someone like him because you know, we know Evans is going to eat. We know Fournette's going to eat. We know Chris Godwin's going to eat. So Otten, I think, could have a couple lucky games where he goes, you know, three for 50, maybe catches a touchdown or two. But he's another dude that I feel like we're kind of probably going to be chasing week in and week out, and you're never going to get consistency from him. Brady does not like to rely on rookies. We know that for damn sure. But Daniel Bellinger, the other pass catcher in the New York Giants offense has been pretty consistent this year. He's been a key piece of their red zone offense. He's super athletic. He was a guy I really liked going into the season. I think he's, you know, he's running all the routes. He's playing all the snaps. He's a full-time player there. Uh, I think he's someone that you can actually have a little bit of trust in, at least to go like three for 50 week for week for week and know that you're not going to get like a zero point donut out of him for the most part. Corey Davis seems to be the wide receiver with the most chemistry uh, with Zach Wilson, though, that offense is throwing the ball like 20, point, 20 times a game. So I'm not going crazy about that. There are a couple stashes on this list that I think are worth putting a, a couple fab dollars on. Right now, like Jamison Williams is, I've been saying this for a couple of weeks, but he's a dude that you should pick up because you could throw him onto your IR spot. Now, once he gets healthy, what, what's going to happen is he's not going to be, be available on waiver wires for as soon as they release one report that this dude is practicing, he's back at practice, then you just need to le release one Twitter clip of him doing like side shuffles in his fucking backyard and people are going to lose their shit. So go get him right now because he doesn't take up a roster spot. He's just sitting on the IR for most people. So go get Jameson Williams now before any report drops on him uh, and then you'll be sitting pretty. I also think Kyron Williams is probably worth looking at, but I'm not going to like try to get all cute and, and sound super smart here. Cam Akers is gone. Darrell Henderson is pretty disappointing. But Malcolm Brown's going to be there. Malcolm Brown's going to be annoying. Um, Kyron Williams is also small, slow, is not explosive. And he's also coming back from an extremely serious high ankle sprain. Um, that cost him six weeks, and we don't even know when he's going to be back, right? We're just we're just like saying a buzz name because he might have a path to opportunity in like three weeks. So I think he's worth, if you're in a deeper league, picking him up, putting him on the IR, seeing how that backfield situation kind of plays itself out because it's not like Anderson or obviously Malcolm Brown have like run away with the position right now. It's up for grabs, but it's also behind an, uh, a decimated 
terrible offensive line at this point. So I don't know how much success a running back could even have in this backfield to begin with, but he's another stash along with uh, Jameson Williams that I would have my eye on. Uh, Josh Kelly got hurt last night. His knee injury, he left, didn't return. So Sonny Michelle seems to be the backup for Austin Eckler. I don't know. You can you try to get cute with Deion Jackson, but I do believe Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines will both be back this week. So he's not, I mean, he, he should have been picked up last week. So I don't think he's really widely available there. Uh, besides that, and uh, listen, you got the Corey Davises, you got Zay Jones, who's similar to Corey Davis. Zay Jones, I believe, actually leads the Jaguars in targets this year. I might have lied about that, but I thought I heard that somewhere today. So I think he's another player that, you know, if you're down fucking tremendously this week, he's a guy that could fill in for you. All right. So that's like 10, 15 names. I know you guys are going to complain. None of these guys are available. No matter who I say, no one's available on anyone's waiver wire. I don't even know why I do these goddamn videos anymore for you, but I love you. That's why I do it. That's why I do it for you. Okay. Waiver wire, week seven, it's easy. Don't blow it all, but you could blow some because there's some good players, mostly young wide receivers. Some old Kenyon Drake, Latavius Murray are like literally the same dude. They're just like six foot one running backs that run very straight up, but they get into these run heavy offenses that just feed them and feed them and feed them. And I guess they're in a good spot. So go grab them if you need some running backs, uh, but you could stash a couple players this week as well. There's a couple young tight ends that we like, but we like the Steph Curry over 0.5 points the most. The link to prize picks, if you're a first time depositor, right down below. Click It'll take you right to the app store. Use code BDGE when you deposit $10 on there, and they're going to double whatever you put down. Go nail Steph Curry point five line. Go enjoy the NBA tip-off tonight. Go enjoy the rest of your lives because I'll, I'll be back tomorrow. I love you. I'm out.